is a providential gift which either he gives it to you or nobody else can give it to you there's no other way to have it money cannot buy a today in your life a man who all his life saved his money saved his money saved his money and right now he was having 50 crores of saving with him decided now i'm going to enjoy my life and the day he decided now i'm going to enjoy my life and use this 50 crores somebody was standing in front of him he asked who are you you have come without my permission and he said my name is death i only show up to people to whom i have come he said this is not fair when are you planning to take me he said, right now. No, no, just now I counted. I have 50 crores with me. And only now I have decided to enjoy it. You cannot come, death said. But I don't come with invitation. I come and invite. <laughs> you have to come. Man said, see, please, if you want, you take 25 crores. <laughs> Give me at least one month of life. I will enjoy the remaining 25 crores and then come. Look at the mentality of man. Even on the threshold of death, he is willing to give only 25 crores, not pura 50 crores. So I'll give you 25 crores. Negotiation. Death said, I don't think you understand how I operate. I don't negotiate. Your time has come, I have to take. Man says, I'll give you entire 50 crores here. Just give me one day in life. Death said, I can't give you another moment in life. Man pleaded, at least give me one moment in life. Death yielded, said, okay, whatever you want to do, do it for one moment. He ran to his scribbling pad and wrote there in the scribbling pad, all of you have money, immediately start enjoying it. <laughs> and then he added a note. I just now realized, even with 50 crores, I could not buy one minute of life with it. If he doesn't give it, you don't have it. Then how should this today be received? With frustration, with negative thoughts, with anger, shouting at people, making an issue for small, small things. Should there not be peace in the house in the morning? Should not the fragrance of a morning in a home be one of gratitude? Should it not be one of bhakti and devotion? There is no point in some corner a tape recorder going on singing Hara Hara Shankara Jaya Jaya Shankara Om Namo Narayana and in between in the front of the house ban, chew and all these words are being talked here. Everybody shouting at everybody, Kutte, Kamine and this is what is being discussed there. What is the point in having that background? Just imagine me having that serene looking round either side and me going on delivering my speech like this here. Who cares to see that? Background makes sense if the only if the foreground is right. So all the chanting and puja room and everything in the background of your house makes any sense only if you in the foreground is able to carry that peace, carry that bliss, carry that gratitude, carry that, that right positive qualities. And that's what we should hear in the morning. Morning should be one of celebration. The start has to be right. You have to get it right. So I don't care after your bath and after all those things, what you're going to do in your puja room. The moment you've conquered the gap between waking up and getting up, which is the first psychological victory to begin the day, so that you shape the right attitudes in life. And trust me, in less than a year's time, by conquering the gap between waking up and getting up, the disease of procrastination will be out of your life. Out of your life. <laughs> then it's no more a Kabir's Doha. What you have to do tomorrow, do it today. And what you have to do today, do it now. Now it's only a Doha. It will be a living reality through you. And the next instant, even before you brush your teeth, there has to be whispers of prayer. You learn it, teach it to your children, teach it to your loved ones, teach it to everybody whom you can empower. That the first thoughts have to be right. The first thoughts have to be one of gratitude. The first thoughts have to be one of prayerfulness. The first thoughts have to be one of faith. In whatever way you understand, you may not understand slokas, you may not understand, Are yaar, why do you complicate in learning all those things which you don't understand? A child is crying. And the mother knows the child is crying because the child is hungry. And the child is crying. And the mother knows this crying is because the child wants the nappy to be changed. The child is crying and the mother knows it is because the child is hungry. 
The child is crying and the mother knows it's because the child is feeling sleepy. The child is crying and the mother knows it's because the child has a stomach pain. Without using a single word through crying, a mortal mother is able to understand the need of her child. Do you think that eternal father will need all sophisticated words in our communication for him to understand us? I want to learn Rudram, I want to learn Sahasarnamam, I want to learn this bhajan, I want to learn the complete version of Naukar Mantra. If you learn, wonderful. But if you don't, he understands your silence, he understands your words. For a minute, if the heart can beat in gratitude and say, thank you God. If for a minute the heart can beat and say, I understand this day of mine is your gift unto me, my Lord, and the way I live this day will be my gift unto you. I'll make my day count. <laughs>